As tourists, we see a sliver of a new culture whenever we travel, a tiny glimpse of how another part of the world operates. But what if we were more than a tourist? What if you had an opportunity to immerse yourself in a foreign culture and learn the intricacies of their business world? Globase, Global Business and Social Enterprise, is a student-led initiative at Indiana University's Kelly School of Business. The Kelly School of Business frequently takes trips overseas to give our students a taste of international flavors. From Brazil to China, India and beyond, the Kelly School of Business sends tomorrow's business leaders to the far reaches of the globe. The Globase experience is unlike any other trip because our MBA students serve as actual consultants to business leaders in other countries in exchange for the learning experience of a lifetime. I guess if I were to try to describe Globase to somebody outside of the university, I would say Globase is an initiative where the MBA students try to take all the things we've learned in school, take that to another country, help a business to grow. And when we say grow, it might be just improve their, in our case, maybe improve exports just enough that they're allowed to, able to grow their business. Maybe they have to hire on a new person to make jewelry. And by hiring on that new person to make jewelry, that's another person that can now purchase more goods throughout the country. They're also contributing more as their income into taxes. And just a very small incremental growth that spreads out, not just to that business, but then spreads out into the community, into more things, and overall slowly helps their economy grow. Well, I think it's interesting because I think it's actually changed. And I think that's one of the things that's really exciting about this project is because it's so student-led and because it's so diverse and kind of changing um, that we were actually going to go in and have seminars with businesses and kind of teach them some of the academic um, aspects of what we've learned and kind of transgress that to people originally in El Salvador. Um, and as that project has changed and when it changed to being in Peru, um, part of that was that it was a more established economy so that these businesses are a little bit more established than what we probably would have been working with in, Peru, um, in El Salvador. So the way that it's changed now is that we're actually going in as consultants. So there's groups, uh, there's five groups who are working with five different businesses. Two of them are in the textile, one's in pharma, one's in jewelry, and one's in beauty. And we're going in specifically identifying a business need or a business problem that the owners or people who are running the organization have expressed to us. And then we're actually going in with specific recommendations to help them address those needs. I, I think it's probably an opportunity for us to experience international business in its purest form with a group of partners that are very interested in having this kind of cross-cultural exchange of ideas. I, I learned very early on in our Globase experience this isn't just about the business any longer. This is about the people and about the cultures and about learning to work with these different groups of people in a way that helps them, yes, ultimately benefit their business. But it, it's really about us reaching outside of our own borders, reaching outside of our own world and into theirs, and them in turn being a part of ours and having that exchange of ideas. How that manifests here is a bunch of students from Kelly going down into Peru and working with these businesses. But, but that's, that's what it is on the surface. Under, underneath, it's our opportunity to really learn about one another as business professionals. Well, it's a lot of work, and it's actually probably more work than what we originally thought it would be because moving from a seminar format to a consultant format, there's just a lot more on your plate. So you're not kind of creating these, these seminars that everybody can hear one audience and one seminar. You're creating you know, five different projects, five different proposals. We've done a lot of primary as well as secondary research, so we've talked a lot with our client, had some pretty informal as well as formal interviews with him, um, exchanged quite a bit of emails, but just basically trying to understand the ins and outs of his business, his strategy, why he chose the US, why he's choosing to export the, 
the types of drugs he wants to export. And as well, uh, we've taken a real good look at some of the library resources that we have, which are just phenomenal. Um, there's tons of industry reports that we could look at that's really helpful. In fact, it's given us insight that we that our client doesn't have about his own industry in Peru. Ahead of time, it's a little difficult when you can't actually see the day-to-day -day operations, uh, but we do know we're going to need a marketing framework laid out before we hit the ground. So we decided, we looked at the packaging, we looked at the packaging of our competitors and kind of figured out what the playing field looked like in terms of a price value equation. And then ahead of time, we also did a market survey of U.S. participants, not just in business schools, but across the country through family and friends to kind of get a better, broader demographic. Uh, so we can kind of get a feel for what people value in the United States in terms of beauty products and pricing. In addition to the classroom exercises and the research that the MBAs did to prepare for their journey to Peru, Dr. Theo Paredes, a Peruvian anthropologist, paid a visit to educate the Globace team on the unique cultural dynamics they might encounter while in Peru. Oh, basically I want to place Peru in terms of time and space to have you a, a general view of what, what uh, Peru is. Um, give you a little explanation about the um, geography of Peru and this, uh, how in this um, uh, huge variety of uh, environments, as I was telling before that Peru is the second country in biodiversity, people has been respond to their own um, needs and how is the social structure in Peru today that has been come from the ancient cultures like the Inca culture. Peru, not being maybe a huge country, has been a very important country to the history of men. Something that we cannot deny is perhaps that we eat potatoes almost every day. And the big contribution, or one of the biggest contributions of uh, Peru and the per ancient Peruvians to the world was the potato. Also corn. There was a discussion between if the corn has been uh, grow and developed in Central America or Peru. Now we know that in Peru there has been found the most primitive corn 7,000 years ago. Uh, one of the things that uh, now is coming in as a very important thing from Peru is the possibility to find more uh, uh, medicines in the Amazons. Um, fibers, textile fibers like alpaca in different uh, products that has not been well known yet in the world market. Millie Bloom Jewelry is one of the businesses that the MBA team worked with while in Lima. Millie Bloom is a company that specializes in silver. Millie employs around 30 people at her facility and is looking to expand her business even more. So this is, you see, oh, this is like you my, ha I live here okay. almost. Oh, yes. you can see. Yes. These are all the stones. Uh -huh. These are all the stones which is the, this is, this is not so, most, most of the time it's, this is a complete mess. You can see that this, I ordered it a little bit, no, because you were coming. So I'm always here making everything. Right now we use a lot of stones and we use leather and, and leather and rubber and glass and mm -hmm. many different things. So I have to, to give the, the, for example, I'm going to show you, I have, for example, this, this I bought in Spain, for example, okay. and this have the price, because mm -hmm. everything has to have the price which I'm, I'm going to be selling. And I decide weekly what the girls in the workshop are going to do. Mm -hmm. I'll show you. The jewelers in their, in, their, in their houses, they make these pieces and they bring them to me. And okay. so with this, I make things, no? For example, no, I'm going to, I'm going to show you. For example, no? Mm -hmm. This is how, right, how I buy silver. It's heavy. This is silver. Ah. It's the pure silver. 
it's 1,000. Uh -huh. It has to be mixed with copper in order to make it harder, uh -huh. because it's, if it's not, soft. it's too soft. Uh -huh. Yes, it's too soft. So everything is 925, which means 75 copper and 925 of pure silver. And this is, it's how I buy it. It's like a small piece, you see? It's yeah. like, how do you say, pellets? I don't know. Pellets, pellets, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you do you do all the designs, or do you have somebody? Uh, who no, the I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I yeah. do a lot of the designs, but you know, many many things. I'm going to show you. For example, I'm all the time. No, I'm all the time collecting. Okay. From magazines. Oh, you get ideas. Things I like. Ideas. Take I take something from the internet, or I don't know, or many times, you know, the the clients they bring me like their and I want something like this or something uh -huh. like that, and everything you can get ideas from a lot of things. You see, also the jewelers they bring me different things. So they say. Mm. Do you like this? Do you like that? If I like, I make it. Many times, and I'm always watching people, you see? It's funny, I told them, <laughs> the other day I was in a funeral and I was telling my husband, I know I'm going to make a new pair of earrings because I was watching somebody with something I like. This is a glass. Silver processing involves heating the silver to a high temperature. Then cooling the silver in a large container of water. And finally, cutting the cooled plastic away to extract the shaped silver. After the cast has been cut, the silver must be washed and cleaned to remove impurities. The silver is then heated again with flame torches and shaped manually by these Millie Bloom workers. Chemicals are applied to make the silver more malleable and able to be formed into jewelry pieces. The silver is sometimes pressed sanded and polished to give it a beautiful sheen. Okay. Working with uh, Millie Bloom Jewelry, we are actually looking to help her devise a more specific strategy on how to export to the U.S. She's currently exporting in South America, but she has tried a couple different strategies, hasn't had a whole lot of luck, so she's looking to us having experience in the U.S. market to help her identify the market, identify what channels she can use to export, and then wrap that into a strategy that best fits the skills that she has currently and help her with partners for the areas she doesn't have as much expertise in. This is the, the common one. You see that, uh, can I say the cheap one? And it's, the, yeah, I like it. And you know, it's... it's uh -huh. But it still looks beautiful. It's very elegant looking. And people like the orange. Yes. And you know, see? these are ladies, so they uh -huh. love the packaging and yes. you know. And so the, the jewelry is wrapped in a little papel de seda lupita. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and there's a stickers and... Very nice. And I love the logo. And, and you know, this is my... my signature? My signature. I love it. Yeah. Yes. It's my signature. It's a, it's a, it's a very common letter. I studied in a school called Villa Maria. And it's, that's the type of letter. Palmer. It's very known. You know I'm terrible wrapping, but usually you put the jewelry here and they they wrap it with this, you see, mm -hmm. yes. and then and then they put it in the back. Okay. And you know what's here? It's the it says like the product you just bought has been made with sterling silver. You have to take care of of, of is the high temperature and ¿Cómo se dice golpes? Uh, uh, damage from damage. from being protected from yeah, damage. Yeah, and you put oh, this, I and here's the the address and the telephone, and you put it here, and this goes into here. 
Oh. You see, and they love it because it's like a small oh, purse. Beautiful. And I like it also. And it's this is like for the more expensive things. Easy. For the necklaces, usually as they are like more expensive, I put ah. this type, wow. which is a common one. You see, I will see, which is the common one, and it has a meal inside. Oh, beautiful. And you know, that price, the cost of, which is 12 soles, 12 soles, it's in the price. It's already in the price. No, and this for earrings. And last year, last year I did this one. This I brought it from the, my, from the, I like these boxes. And it was very hard for the guy to make them because to make this perfect, yes. And I also have like this box which goes with a ribbon, an orange ribbon, and this, like, sticker, no? And it's a box in which you put, I don't know, people like, like, fancy packaging, yeah. They love it and they keep all the box. And you know what's the important thing? That they keep the box in their houses. Yes. I don't know the states, but in Lima, people keep the box. Oh, really? Because I keep them for, for other things. And this is the bag also. Wonderful. And this is a plastic bag. And everything has a mini. It's wonderful. Yes. This is the bag again. Very first class. So the MBA team that worked with Millie offered her several suggestions to help her grow her business. Web optimization, a possible internship with Kelly students, and the idea of an e-commerce partnership were all ideas proposed to Millie during the team's final presentation at the American Chamber of Commerce. Well, the, the first thing that I might say is that Peruvian people is a very friendly people and uh, friendly, creative and uh, I think enthusiastic. But something that most of the regular Peruvian people doesn't know is the rules of the international market. Business takes place within a cultural context and so there's nothing that says that the way business is done in one country is going to be exactly the same as another country. So everything from language differences to uh, the role of government and of course a, a, an area that's very important and interesting for international managers is the, the different ethical systems or ethical differences, uh, different um, uh, norms that exist that, that govern the behavior of, of business and, and relationships and interactions and so those can create some pretty big differences and, and ethical issues. Um, one of the main um, problems that I have been confronted in my experience to do a rural development was infrastructure, particularly uh, roads to transport uh, different kind of products. Uh, but now there is a big effort in the government that they are doing that kind of, um, uh, of investment. And, but basically I do believe that if you, uh, the Peruvian people now with uh, big efforts of the government are trying to be more serious in terms of uh, making business and particularly to expand the business for out of the country. Incasign is another business that the Globase team worked with. Incasign specializes in clothing made with Pima cotton and alpaca blend fabrics. We're specifically looking into ent entering the high-end boutique market. Um, so part of what we're doing right now is just trying to understand, well, what are the key problems? What are the things that he's going to face doing that? You know, it's, it's a pretty substantial sized business. Um, so, you know, is this the best time to enter the market? Um, and if not, you know, what do we recommend? The team toured the production facility in Lima, asked questions about logistics, and got an overall idea of the textile process. A nosotros nos llegan unas fichas de desarrollo, así un gráfico a mano alzada nada más, donde especifica los detalles. Despacio para que puedan ir también en este. So this is, he gets a, a blueprint like this with the 
specific uh, information here, the sizes, okay? Y a veces de referencia nos llega una muestra física. Okay. Sometimes they also send along a sample. Yo me encargo de hacer el requerimiento de hilado, definir esto con mis técnicos tejedores, un departamento de desarrollo de muestras donde tengo cuatro máquinas de tejido. Yeah. So he is the, entonces usted es el jefe de, jefe de la producción. Ah, de la planta. Sí. So he's the plant manager. He receives the blueprints and then he works with the, uh, with the uh, actual technical people. Cotizaciones. Cotizaciones es quote, uh, oh, right? Cotizaciones es que el precio. 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 Para okay. precio. So once once the uh, product is approved, then he creates the. The, uh, the este, price este the, the cost. El, la cotización es lo que le cuesta a usted sí, para la, producir. No a lo que se va a vender, no al precio que se va a vender. Precio de venta. Ok, so here he's got the actual cost of production and then here is the uh, sales price. Acá, acá en la empresa peruana? En empresa, no, por ejemplo cuando va a Estados Unidos, me imagino que en Estados Unidos no le compran. compran a usted, pero sí. a otros países, ¿no? Comparan con la China. Yeah. Comparan con la China. His, his comparison group, his toughest competition is China. So that's what he, he has cost. to fight for production costs. Yeah. So his, his customers are looking at the China price and then they're comparing his production costs. That helps answer the question in my mouth because I have to find out who else can do it cheaper. China so that could be a good alpaca. So they're trying to match, they're constantly trying to match the. Um, sort of the types of materials that are coming from Asia and so they're, they're trying to add alpaca to make their product better than the synthetic materials. So is Asia not using alpaca? He said no. Let, let me ask. Esa es una pregunta que surgió anteriormente. Los chinos no trabajan con alpaca. Ellos importan alpaca a de Perú. Okay. Pero una vez que le importan la mezcla mucho okay. con sus fibras. So the Chinese import alpaca from Peru and then they they dilute it or mix it with other synthetic materials to make it go longer. So the advantage that they have is that the alpaca that comes from Peru is more pure. It's more pure it's mixed less with other synthetic materials. Esto va a entrar a la producción. Va a entrar a la producción. So they've separated what they actually need for production to create the products that they're going to make here and then they have the extra material down Pequeños saldos que se vuelven a usar en muestras, ¿no? Okay, so then they keep these and they uh, reuse them for future samples. El nuevo requerimiento donde ya no importa el color, sino solamente importa el tipo de algodón, la mezcla. With the, with the extra material, sometimes they'll make something where the color doesn't matter. They'll just use whatever color is available. What matters is the feel and the feel of the fabric. Somos una empresa nueva de un año recién, donde recién nos estamos organizando. Okay, so this is a new plant. It's been around one year and, it was, and they still don't have much software or much technology, but they're sort of, it's part of their launch process for the export market. Notoria. In one year, we've increased a lot. So they've grown quite a bit in one year. The pieces of clothing are rigorously worked with to ensure the design and the fit. The fabric is steamed and padded to hold its shape. This facility serves as a prototype factory where the main line of clothing is determined. Only samples or small batches are produced here and are then sent to larger facilities that mass produce the clothing. The team assigned to work with Incazine suggested appealing to an affluent female customer base by highlighting the company's local blend fabrics. The team proposed U.S. targeted marketing materials to differentiate Incazine from other textile producers. During the final presentation, the team seemed confident that the business would grow by establishing design and manufacturing relationships with boutiques, developed brands, and high-end retailers.
think the value that we were able to give to the Peruvian businesses and from talking to them, it was really that we gave them an outside perspective. They have certain ways that they've done business in the past and you kind of tend to perpetuate those. And by taking in people from a different culture, from different areas, and seeing different ways that they approach the business, it just gives you a different perspective and different ideas on ways you can approach different aspects of your business. The Globase experience was a life-changing experience. I really didn't realize what a uh, comprehensive leadership development experience this would be. Not just for the leadership team, for everybody. You know, you, you go into one of these things thinking, yes, I want to serve, yes, I want to go to a, a country I haven't been to before, um, yes, I want to be part of a program that Kelly hasn't done before, but you have no idea what you've just signed up for. We really had to step it up. There were a lot of challenges here. There was the language challenge. There was the culture challenge, um, basic health issues. One of the things that I gained from going internationally and working with these small businesses that are trying to start up but doing so in an environment that's very foreign to me, both from a cultural standpoint, a language standpoint, a legal standpoint, that created, it, that tested my bounds. That made me appreciate what it took to be a true entrepreneur. That made me appreciate what it took to be a real consultant and have to think quickly, think by the seat of your pants, but also leverage all the skills that you have on the table that Kelly's given us and really add value. And for me, it was, it was both comforting to know that in a truly ambiguous environment, I could still add that value, but it was also a great test because you learn a lot about yourself when you're thrown into that kind of environment. The Globase experience for me is the defining experience of my MBA program. I pretty much got a job offer because of the enthusiasm that I brought in regard to this project. I was interviewing with a, a large national consulting firm two weeks ago. When I met with the senior associate and she asked me about leadership experience, I gave her one try example from my work background. It was decent leadership experience. And then I said, do you really, really want to hear about an amazing leadership experience? And I brought her into that story. I was practically up on the table with enthusiasm for what I had just experienced in the Globase program. Thank you.